Good evening and welcome to evening prayer on this Thursday evening. Let's pray. God, O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. So blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory forever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as your children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. So we join this evening in prayer that this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. So let us pray with one heart and mind. So as our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may the mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. And so tonight's psalm is Psalm 61. Hear my crying, O God, and listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call to you with fainting heart. O set me on a rock that is higher than I. For you are my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tent forever and take refuge under the cover of your wings. For you, O oh God, will hear my vows. You will grant the request of those who fear your name. You will add length of days to the life of the king, that this, his years may be endured, um, endure throughout all generations. May he sit enthroned before God forever. May steadfast love and truth watch over him. So will I always sing praise to your name and day by day fulfil my vows. So, O oh Christ, risen Christ, as you knew the discipline of suffering and the victory that brings us salvation, so grant us the presence in our weakness and a place in your unending kingdom now and forever. Amen. And so we're going to scroll to the Gospel reading. It's not a Gospel reading, it's from Acts. Acts 20, 17 to the end. From Miletus he sent a message to Ephesus, asking the elders of the church to meet him. When they came to him, he said to them, You yourselves know how I lived among you the entire time from the first day that I set foot in Asia, serving the Lord with all humility and with tears, enduring the trials that came to me through the plots of the Jews. I did not shrink from doing anything helpful, proclaiming the message to you and teaching you publicly from house to house. And as I testified to both Jews and Greeks about repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, as a captive to the spirit, I am on the way to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and persecutions are waiting for me. But I do not count my life or any value to myself, if only I may finish my course and the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus Christ to testify to the good news of God's grace. And now I know that none of you, among whom I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom, will ever see my face again. Therefore I declare to you this day that I am not responsible for the blood of any of you, for I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole purpose of God. Keep watch over yourselves and over all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the church of God that he obtained with the blood of his own son. I know that after I have gone, savage wars will come among you, not sparing the flock. 
some even from your own group will become distorting the truth in order to entice the disciples to follow them. Therefore, be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease day or night to warn people with tears. And now I commend you to God and the message of his grace, a message that is able to build you up and give you the inheritance among all who are sanctified. I coveted no one's silver or gold or clothing. You know for yourselves that I have worked with my own hands to support myself and my companions. In all this, I have given you an example that such work we must support the weak, remembering the words of our Lord Jesus. For himself, he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. When he had finished speaking, he knelt down with them and prayed. There was such weeping among them all. They embraced Paul and kissed him, grieving especially because of what he had said, that they would not see him again. Then they brought him to the ship. So fear not, I have redeemed you. I have called you by name and you are mine. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I've called you by name and you are mine. When you walk through waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. I have called you by name and you are mine. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. And so we are going to now come to a time of prayer. So let us pray. So Lord Jesus, we thank you, Father, for the day that has been. Thank you, Father, that you have been there with us throughout this day, from beginning into the middle and now. And you go before us into sleep. And so, Father, we bring to you the needs of the world and we pray, Father, that your will would be done throughout the world in terms of this virus, that, Father, that you would make the vaccines available to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so, Lord Jesus, we pray for our local government and our national government. Would you give them wisdom as they lead? Father, we pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit would protect them from making unwise decisions and that they would make decisions that are good for all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so, Father, we pray for those who work locally in our care homes. We thank you for the many who are within our church family who care, support work within those care places. We pray for your hand of protection on them that they wouldn't catch COVID and pass it on to the residents. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our schools at this time, many of which have increased COVID numbers. We pray, Father, for wisdom of management, that they would be able to manage these situations well. Give them wisdom. Protect their four walls, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Father, for the emergency services. We particularly pray for those within our own congregation that work in terms of fire and ambulance and within their health, um, health profession. Father, would you protect them, we pray this night. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we pray for those who are sick or suffering in any way. And we pray, Father, for your hand of protection on them. And we name them quietly in the quietness of our hearts. We also pray for those who have been bereaved. And we pray, Father, that you would bring them comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
So Lord, we beseech you mercifully to hear the prayers of your people who call upon you and grant that they may both perceive and know what things they ought to do and also may have the grace and power faithfully to fulfil them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so we join together in the prayer that our Saviour taught us. So we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so we come to the end of our time together. And let's um, pray together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. So let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Take care, God bless, and maybe see some of you Sunday morning at 10. Have a good weekend. Bye.